Well, <clears throat> uh, well, <laughs> good start. Uh, welcome to my fourth YouTube type thing. And um, somebody who's taken an interest in my videos thus far, first three, suggested that I um, tell a few kind of like personal stories um, about my time in prison, for example, which I might do. Um, but also things like, um, how did you go vegan? Which seems to be a, a story or a, something that people are interested in. Before I do that, though, I want to... Uh, I've just... Um, uh, it was my 60th birthday yesterday, so I'd like to thank the vegans in the Dublin area for organising um, a get-together uh, for that. Um, uh, thanks very much. It was uh, appreciated. And also thanks to my um, football team at my university, UCD. Uh, they gave me this. Uh, let me see if I can get it. Which is um, <laughs> a Lifetime Achievement Award, they're calling it. So uh, so I've got this shirt now where I say um, that I'm, I've got a number 60 on it and it's got, and still playing, uh, and still playing football. So... That's good. And to Shane, who um, one of the footballers, um, this is the uh, the other award that I was talking about. This is um, this is the first football trophy that I got, and this is called Interstreet, uh, and it's uh, dated 1970. So that's the first uh, football-related uh, award. And then this one. I think he's either the second or maybe that might be the third, but uh, a few and far between, put it that way. Um, so, so I want to say thank you to uh, the lads uh, as well. Um, I'm a bit shy about uh, things like this, but um, yeah, I prefer to uh, talk to a group of um, animal advocates uh, in their thousands and uh, and deal with a kind of party situation. Okay, so. Um, the vegan thing, um, I always say that um, I think as a child I had a commitment to the notion of fairness and what's fair and what's not fair. And um, I have this image in my childhood, uh, my sister who went vegan in 1978, um, she says, um, went vegan in 1978. Um, she always used to kind of do these World Wildlife Fund type things, you know, and I remember on the mantelpiece of an envelope saying, you know, the the lion appeal or the, the hippo kind of um, appeal, this kind of stuff. And so um, that coincided with a big scandal at the RSPCA in England, and that was about uh, the chief executive or somebody uh, getting um, a huge amount was worth of money um, to carpet his office and um, I think it would be kind of like in today's money it would be millions you know and I always thought well you know who, who's getting this money that my sister is raising you know it, it um, coincided with that and then that, and then at 1979 no sorry 1977 I saw a um, a big article about blood sports and anti-blood sports in, I think it was a New Musical Express, uh, 1977, and um, featured in the article was the Hunt Saboteurs. And what appealed to me was the fact that the Hunt Saboteurs were um, asking for action and uh, not money. And so I kind of wanted to get involved with uh, the movement um, uh, on that level, uh, and so I was a kind of like a grassroots activist uh, straight away, which is, you know, I, I kind of benefited from, uh, in a way. Going back to the thing about uh, feeling fairness as a child, I've got two memories that I tend to mention, which is one is uh, when I was at school on the Isle of Wight in Ride. I remember jumping from desk to desk in school. It's been 14, 15, I suppose. And I was trying to let the wasps out that all the other kids were trying to kill. So I remember that, and I was just thinking, well, they can be let out. You know, it's not fair to, to kill them, deprive them of their life for no reason. And then 
when I got my first job, I think I left uh, school about 16 and a half. My first job, well, actually, my first job was um, for Foster's Menswear, believe it or not, but that only was a few months. And then I got a job in a cinema. And I was in the staff room one time, and an usherette, or a female usher, I suppose you might say now, um, there was a crane fly, you know, flying daddy long legs going up and down the wall like this. And um, this person took her shoe off and went BAM! And I said, why did you do that? And she said, oh, I, I really think they're ugly. And I said, well, I think you're pretty ugly, but I wouldn't have done that. To you, it's not fair, you know. So I think that was like a thread going through, which then resonated with me uh, when it came to learning about the Hunts Abateurs and also the fact that they were asking for action and not uh, money. And so um, there's a bit of a false start in 77. I tried, I was in Scunthorpe at the time working in the cinema. Uh, I tried to get involved with the Hunts Abateurs, but um, there was nobody active there at that time. And then when I moved to the London area, or Romford, uh, in 79, there was a lot more things going on. The Romford group were actually going to the Orkneys. That's how I got involved with Sea Shepherd and stuff. So um, a lot more um, things going on. And um, I kind of fell under the wing of a brilliant family called the uh, Spence family, a whole family uh, of uh, vegan activists. And um, went started going sabbing. And... Uh, in the uh, van, as it were, you would be given leaflets from other groups. I remember being given a Compassion World Farming leaflet, which is probably about uh, battery cages, I would think, in those days. We're talking about 1979. And um, another coincidence was that I was watching at home this um, fairly fam famous news programme called John Craven's News Round. And so all the British people listening to this will probably remember that with uh, John Craven, obviously, and then I think, I'm not sure if he does it anymore. And they were interviewing these um, seal killers in the Orkney Islands, and they said that we have to kill the seals because the seals are killing our fish. And I thought, hang on a second, you know, how, how does that work? You know, um, I thought, well, isn't it just the case that the seals got to the fishes before you did? And so I thought, that doesn't make any sense to me. And so I found myself boycotting um, the flesh of fishes while still eating the flesh of other animals. And so I was in that kind of weird situation and thinking about it and everything else coming together at once, I suppose, I realised that um, that kind of boycott didn't quite make any sense. I also... Um, for some reason, understood straight off in a way that vegetarianism didn't make any sense either. And so it, there was only a span of between like about three months that I was a flesh eater and then I became a full vegan, uh, still in 1979 now. Um, so that's, that's the story. I've always been very grateful I always say this, I always be very grateful that I didn't get stuck in the vegetarian thing. I know, I mean, I look at Facebook, almost on a daily basis you see people going, oh, you know, I, I regret the time that I was a vegetarian. I, I wish I'd have known, you know, then what I know now and this kind of stuff. And um, they, they just didn't know. And for the work that I do with the VIP, Vegan Information Project, when we do street work in Dublin, which is every week, we, we meet vegetarians all the time. There are um, two things we can say about them with some certainty, not always, but you know, pretty, pretty, pretty much a high percentage, is that uh, one, they're pretty stuck on cheese, and um, two, they're ignorant of the animal use that they are responsible for. And so they're quite shocked to find out. Um, I remember very clearly about three or four weeks ago, um, one of our volunteers was talking to a vegetarian about the way that um, cow milk, or what I call calf food, arrives uh, on their table. And they, they were shocked and appalled, but didn't know, you know. And so um, 
One thing I always say in relation to vegetarians is that veganism has got a critique of vegetarianism. And it has done since 1944 at the start of the vegan social movement. There's no problem with that, but it's not a great idea to attack individual vegetarians. And of course, you know, there are some who are a bit kind of bullshit about things and they can be as awkward as anybody else in terms of their particular animal use. But that's the point about vegetarianism. From a vegan point of view, it's just a particular type of animal use. And this idea that veganism is a gateway has rightly been criticised lately. And so rather than saying um, go vegetarian first, which used to be almost like standard and um, follows the pattern of most uh, current vegans probably, I think uh, what we tend to do nowadays is say be as vegan as possible because everybody expects there to be incremental steps. The, the enemies, the reducitarian enemies of veganism will say that vegans stand for all or nothing and expect people to go vegan overnight. Uh, what they really mean is go dietary vegan overnight. I mean, it is possible to go vegan philosophically overnight. Um, it's more, more difficult for them in, in a dietary sense. I always say the problem of veganism is not nutrition or health. It's a social thing, uh, which obviously as a sociologist I take an interest in. But um, yeah, so that's that's the thing. Don't uh, don't attack vegetarians. You, we all, as vegans, to understand where they're at, they are taking part in a form of animal use, which creates rights violations and lots and lots of harm. But they don't necessarily know. So we ought to think of them as ignorant, not ignorant persons, but ignorant of what they're doing. And I think if we if we approach vegetarians in that way, um, you know, that's the best way of doing it. And again, as I said in, in another video, when people come up to the stall and they announce that they're a vegetarian, they're looking for validation, but also they want praise for that. And they, they don't get it from us. Um, we 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 just move the conversation on and acknowledge where they are. And I, I tend to say, well, there's a cure for that and kind of make light of it in a way. But um, I tend to think it's wrong to, um, you know, to pr praise this particular type of animal use, uh, especially when it's true, I think, that a dairy heavy vegetarian is probably, you know, if, if animal cruelty is, uh, or animal suffering is the criteria, then a dairy heavy vegetarian is probably doing more harm to other animals than a dairy light flesh consumer, if there is such a, a person or group. Um, so, you know, they shouldn't be kind of um, praised for being vegetarian, but they shouldn't be attacked for it either. Okay, so there's my fourth uh, YouTube type thing. I uh, hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you again soon. Thank you very much.